burning rivers. But um, in its most recent report to Congress, EPA reported that more than 50% of the rivers and streams it assessed are impaired, nearly 80% of bays and estuaries, 91% of ocean and near coastal waters, 100% of the Great Lakes open waters. W would you agree that it is important to get those numbers down? Absolutely. The, the Clean Water Act has been very, very successful, but there's certainly a lot more work the states and the federal government need to do. Can you name a single major initiative that this administration has taken on the regulatory front that has as its expected effect significantly reducing those numbers? Uh, well, yeah. So we're since uh, 2017, we have approved 5,000 total maximum daily loads. We have approved about 240 water quality standards, including reducing the backlog that the agency failed to act on that the states submit, so therefore improving water quality through those states. We've decreased the backlog and have approved several hundred NPDES permits that the federal government uh, regulates. I've developed a, a new water quality trading policy. We've developed aluminum criteria. Uh, we've developed saloon criteria in California, and I could go on and on. So we've taken several major initiatives. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing over 80 environmental rules um, weakened or, or in the process of being weakened. With waters of the U.S. we've talked about, rules regulating toxic discharge, including mercury from power plants. We've talked about the blending proposal, which may allow untreated sewage into our rivers and streams. We've talked about Section 401. H how are any of these steps intended to or likely to have the effect of significantly altering the numbers that I just read. Uh, one, I'm not motivated it, by that. By because that what, goal, what, we're, what we're what was not being reported is the amazing work of the Office of Water and the agency and the regional offices every single day. What what gets reported is a few of the big ticket issues. Ninety five percent of the agency continues to go on and, and performs its mission. There are a few big ticket issues that we're grappling with, like the definition of WOTUS, that I'm trying to restore the rule of law associated with, and so. If, if you, I'd love to spend some time educating you about the portfolio of the Office of Water because the, I am, the agency I am does trying an amazing to get a, job. I'm trying to get at motivation here. You know, sir, you, you, you said a couple of times, in fact, at one point in this hearing, that you have two clear principles that guide your work. One of them, something to do with, um, with not moving goalposts. The second uh, was investment certainty. And... I agree with both of those goals, but I was really struck. You're, you're with the EPA. You're in charge of clean water. Why wasn't the first principle protecting the health and safety of the American people? You've had several opportunities to come to us and to demonstrate that the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning is protecting our kids. And, and yet what you keep coming back to is investor certainty, rule of law. Or, do you work for the Commerce Department, sir? So, no, of course I don't. And that was an answer to that Department. question. If, in my opening statement, I actually focus on big ticket water infrastructure, uh, water reuse, uh, in, you know, working for the water sector and, and work, uh, concerns about our workforce. So every single day I care about and work for, I go into this, we went into this business because you care about the environment. That's that was one answer to one question. And of course, I have multiple core principles. It was se several answers to the question. You, and you keep on coming back to the rule of law. So let me ask you about that. Um, it, in the president's executive order on defining the scope of clean water protections, he directed the EPA and the Corps to develop a rule that relies on a plurality opinion by Justice Scalia in a case about 13 years ago, I think it was Rapanos versus the U.S., um, as the sole basis of asserting these protections. Do you, do you recall how many justices on the court supported that plurality opinion? Uh, one, the executive order said we should be informed by, but we're not bound by. One, so the other thing is, on that opinion, there were three justices that, that joined Justice Scalia, so that's four. Justice Kennedy actually concurred. What people forget about is that Justice Kennedy joined Scalia to overturn the overreach of the federal action in that case. Well, five justices opposed the Scalia opinion, and we're talking about the rule of law here based on a plurality opinion that no court in the 13 years since, has said should be binding on anyone or anything. So I, I don't think that, that your constant references to the rule of law are particularly convincing. The role of the EPA, I have some sense of what your role is. You are not the agency in the U.S. government that is supposed to be fundamentally concerned with investor protection. 
There are other agencies that have that very legitimate purpose. Your job is to be sitting in there arguing often as the lonely voice in the federal government for people. And I have not heard a lot of that ethos expressed here today. Thank you, I yield back.